May 12th, 2008, astrophysicist Dr. Jayant Narlikar gave an open challenge to astrologers and astrological organizations. He would provide them with 40 random horoscopes out of a set of 200 that he had with him. 100 of these were from very smart individuals and the other 100 were from mentally challenged individuals. Indian astrologers claim that they can tell a person's intelligence from their horoscopes. So the astrologers had a simple task. Take the horoscope details given to them and categorize them as intelligent or not intelligent. So how do they do? What is up people? You're watching Science is Joke. My name is Pranab and this video is very long. So I understand if uh, you don't want to watch the whole thing, which is why I've helped out the most impatient among you uh, by putting down timestamps below so you can jump to whatever section you want to watch. But I recommend you watch the whole thing because you wouldn't want to miss out on all the magnificent jokes. Yes, that's right. Uh, this video is coming out after a delay, which means I've had more time to write, which is why it's longer. So grab yourself, I don't know, a biscuit or something and uh, sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Okay, Pranav, just get on with the video. Nobody wants to hear your stupid jokes. But, but I worked so hard. <laughs> Obviously, I'm taking a piss on astrology in this video in case the title and the thumbnail were not obvious enough. And I know there is some of you, including some of you watching or maybe your moms or your dads that make important life decisions based on the positions of stars or based on horoscopes. I'm going to tell you why that's basically the same as tossing a coin before, say, marrying someone. Now that's gonna hurt some sentiment. So before you hit that dislike and type out a hate comment, I'm saying think for yourself, listen to all that I have to see. And if you still disagree, argue against my points in the comments and uh, any comment that disagrees with me, if it's respectful, I will respond to it. With that said, let's begin. First, before we get into Indian astrology, let's try and understand the principles behind astrology and how it came to be. We often say that the sun rises in the east. That is not completely true. The entire sky along with the stars and the moon rise in the east. The whole sky rises in the east and goes across the sky. Across the uh, above. <laughs> Shit. Hey ancestors, spoiler alert, uh, it's not the sky that moves, it's the earth that actually moves. But if the earth were to somehow stay still, the stars in the sky would also stay still. This is because the stars are so far away that their movements are completely imperceptible from the earth. It's like there's this background that is the sky and the stars are also part of this background. It's like the stars are embedded in the blanket that is the sky. So the pattern of stars that you see in the sky today doesn't change much at all over thousands of years. So this is the same pattern of stars that our ancestors saw. Now, if I hand you a piece of paper with a bunch of dots in it, I know about you, but a little kid in me comes out and wants to play connect the dots, try and find all kinds of hidden patterns. Now, our ancestors probably did the same thing and they connected the stars and formed constellations. That's why we have 88 recognized constellations today. You can get an app like SkyMap off the Play Store, point it at the sky and it'll tell you which star or which of the constellations you're looking at. Now, if you give 10 people each a sheet of paper with the same set of dots in it and ask them to connect the dots, they'll probably connect it in 10 different ways. So you'll get 10 different pictures. Why? Because everyone's imagination is different. And the same way, when people in the ancient times came up with these constellations, they used their imaginations and they drew inspiration from their cultures to come up with the constellations. So all the constellations that you see are completely arbitrary. This point becomes important later, so bear with me. 
Now, things happened here on Earth. War often broke out, or rivers, they flooded their banks, and volcanoes erupted, and uh, people started inventing religions to rob dumb people of their money. Now, things also happened in the sky. The patterns would move and change. So, two different things were happening. Things were happening on Earth and things were happening in the sky. So, naturally, people associated the two and thought that one caused the other. And voila, astrology was born. I nearly forgot about the sun and the planets. Uh, where do they come in? Well, unlike the stars, since they're much closer to the Earth, their movements are much more obvious. Not so obvious that uh, you see their movements in a single night, but over the course of several months, you can see them wander across the sky against this background of stars and constellations. So that's where they get their name. In Greek, the word planetai means wanderers. Very creative. Greeks <laughs> very creative now how does this movement happen well over the course of the year as the earth goes around the sun the sun will seem to move from the earth's perspective as well so the circular path that the sun traces around the earth that line is called the ecliptic and the 12 constellations that lie on the ecliptic along the ecliptic they're called the zodiac constellations now the constellation in which the sun is at the time of your birth becomes your zodiac constellation so if you were born on the 14th of march and you were wondering why you're a pisces that's why you're welcome since these constellations occur in a circular path around us and the earth completes its orbit in 12 months, the sun also cycles through these constellations every 12 months. So this repeats every year. Now the planets all go around the sun in roughly the same plane, thanks to the conservation of angular momentum since the time the solar system was formed. So the earth also goes around the sun in this same plane. So if you look at the sky, the planets will also seem to move along the ecliptic. So the planets will also have positions along zodiac constellations at the time of your birth. Now I've told you everything you need to understand Western astrology, but Indian astrology or Vedic astrology or Jyotisha, whatever you prefer to call it, there's a list of names that you can look up on the internet. Now, this is a little more complex because along with the position of planets with respect to the constellations, uh, it also takes into account the position of, drum roll, the moon. Now, the moon's orbit around the Earth is roughly on the same plane as the Earth's orbit around the sun. So the moon goes around the, the ecliptic, the whole ecliptic in 27 days. So divide the ecliptic into 27 equal sections and you get the nakshatras. If you grew up in a Hindu household like me, uh, you know that you have your Rashi, which is basically your zodiac or the position of the sun along the ecliptic when you were born and your nakshatra, which is basically the position of the moon along the ecliptic when you were born. So far, if everything seems very scientific, that's because it is. But remember, all we've done is mark out the positions of the sun, the moon and the planets with respect to the stars. That's just basic astronomy. Where the pseudoscience begins is when you say that any of this has an effect on our lives. Remember that correlation does not mean causation. But that is the crux of astrology. The stars supposedly determine what we like and decide the course of our lives. What job we're going to do, how much money we're going to make and the geographical location of where your spouse is going to come from. Namaste, Padi Ji. How are you? Padi Ji, look, he's a Bombay girl. He's a man who's been working on his age for 17-18 years. And he's going to be in the next year. He's going to be in the next year. 
और पत्नी नॉर्थ साइड की होगी सुंदर शार्ड आउट टू इंडियन मैच मेकिंग ऑन नेटफ्लिक्स एनी वे नो एस्ट्रोलॉजर कैन टेल यू द मैकेनिज्म बाई विच द स्टार्स डिटर्मिन योर फ्यूचर हाउ दे मेक प्रडिक्शंस ऑल दे कैन डू इज सिद दैर प्रिटेन टू टेल यू योर फ्यूचर एंड टेक योर मनी एंड डू द सेम टू द नेक्स्ट पर्सन लेट्स टेक अ क्लोजर लुक एट वेदिक एस्ट्रोलॉजी दर आर ट्वेल्व राशीज सो ट्वेल्व जोडिया साइंस and there seems to be one sign for each rashi correspondingly and the sign leo if you look at it its name in uh, vedic astrology is simha which is the hindi word for lion now this is interesting because um, well take a look at this this is the constellation leo if anyone can see a lion in there let me know in the comments below because uh, i can't but okay i understand people have weird imaginations someone could have connected those stars and formed a lion uh, but as i said before in this video the constellations are completely arbitrary so doesn't it seem like a huge coincidence that someone in greece saw a lion in those stars and someone in india saw a lion again in those stars this all seems strange until you realize that vedic astrology has greek origins they did not originate in the vedas once again the term vedic has nothing to do with the vedas uh, it's like matching with someone really hot on a dating app only to uh, figure out that it's a fake profile the adjective vedic has nothing to do with the vedas that idea i explore it in a different context in the context of vedic math in this video check it out if you're interested so where were we yeah vedic astrology came to india from greece along with some other ideas when alexander the great made a friendly visit in the 3rd century bc if you still don't believe me check out all the zodiac constellations of western astrology and see how they match with the indian counterparts in vedic astrology and yeah you can see the commonality so how do astrologers convince you that they're telling the truth that they can actually predict your future Well if you go to an astrologer or a psychic or a tarot card reader or a palm reader whatever they all use the same psychological technique and a test on this was done by the psychologist Bertram Forer In 1948 Forer gave 39 of his students a personality test they were given a set of statements that tried to describe their personality and each student was then asked to rate how well the test described them out of 5 the 39 students gave the test an average score of 4.26 you'd say that that is an excellent description of their personality but actually professor forer was just f***ing with his students because he had actually given all of the students the exact same set of statements statements that he found in a newspaper horoscope column they were statements like you have a great need for other people to like and admire you you have a tendency to be critical of yourself you have a great deal of unused capacity which you have not turned to your advantage you have really bad breath in the morning these statements are called barnum statements they're general vague descriptions of uh, likely and desirable qualities that everybody has they're talking about a general person but if you listen to those statements they feel like they apply to you this is what astrologers and palm readers and horoscopes do to make you feel like they're talking about you this particular experiment has been repeated several times you can find many videos right here on youtube and the accuracy rating always remains very high another technique that they often use is called cold reading here's a video of uh, the british medalist darren brown doing some cold reading 
Do you know who I am, what I do? No. No, great, but I think I can tell you what you do for a living. Look at me, it's, uh, it's people, it's PR, it's marketing, it's that sort of thing. Yeah. Is that what you do? Yes. You look for people's skills, you put them in positions. It's some sort of headhunting, is that right? Recruitment, yes. that yes. sort of thing? What do you do? Recruitment consultant. It's fashion, it's an assistant in a shop. This is a fashion, specifically denim, yeah? You were selling denim, you were selling jeans, is that right? You were doing that and you haven't done it for a while. You, you recently come out of that job, is that right? Yes. Is Absolutely that right? right, yeah. Fantastic. Oh my God. <laughs> How did he do it? Well, he's not like the psychics. He's actually honest. Take this guy, his walk, the gum chewing, the long coat, his confident, streetwise detached. He's protective of his girlfriend, so he's aware of the danger around him. His hair tells me he's not in the forces, so I'd say he's a journalist. Workmates, the woman on the left, she's wearing nighttime gear at lunchtime but has conservative hair and makeup so it's only a work outfit. The rose means she's gregarious, so these two work in the PR end of high street fashion. That's how cold reading works. Sometimes you give away things about yourself unconsciously that other people can read. It's what this astrologer is doing in Indian matchmaking. Hey, it's okay, it's okay. सत्रह अठारह वर्ष से काम करने का लक्षण है ये और अपना बिजनेस बहुत आगे बढ़ेगा इसका हट्टी जिद्दी और स्वाभिमानी सो घमंडी है और अपना शादी अगले वर्ष में है इसका अगले वर्ष में होगा और पत्नी नॉर्थ साइड की होगी सुंदर भगवान no astrologer can make a specific prediction about your future and even if they do that's complete guesswork and even bad guesses have a success rate. They have a chance of being right. And I can say this with full confidence because even the basic principles of astrology are wrong. The earth wobbles a little bit every few thousand years and this causes the constellations to shift a little bit on the ecliptic. So if you're a Scorpio, then the sun was actually in Libra at the time when you were born. Now this should f up all astrology readings, but um, it doesn't because they're all Barnum statements and should apply to everyone. Now credits to Vedic astrology here because they get this part right. Uh, the Rashis are a little bit more accurate. So uh, I'm a Scorpio according to Western astrology, but I'm a Libra according to uh, Vedic astrology. And Libra is a little bit more accurate. However, they both, both Vedic astrology and Western astrology get this part wrong. There are actually 13 zodiac constellations. That's right, there should be 13 zodiac signs, 13 Rashis. The constellation of Eucus lies on the ecliptic and the sun passes through the constellations from the dates November 29 to December 18. If any of you have uh, birthdays during this period, I hate to have to break it to you like this, but uh, you've been lied to all this while. What's next? <laughs> Your parents tell you you are adopted. <laughs> oh, that would be the worst. Another thing is that the constellations are completely arbitrary. So the constellation Leo, for example, uh, has nothing to do with the lion. And yet, people who have that zodiac sign, people who are Leo, they are supposed to be fierce and fearless, qualities of lion. Uh, and Scorpios are somehow sexy. Uh, that's right, ladies, I'm a Scorpio. So y'all better hit me up. I'm gonna leave my phone number in the description. Did you actually check the description for my phone number? Do I look that stupid? Anyway, I guess uh, people have some kind of weird uh, kinky fantasies involving scorpions. So my point is that the names, the constellations themselves are completely arbitrary and the names of the constellations have a lot to do with what kind of qualities are ascribed to uh, people born in that sign. Uh, and this is completely stupid because the constellations are arbitrary. Now I'm gonna further emphasize everything I've been saying in this video uh, with a few examples of predictions of astrology that have gone completely wrong. Like this year 2020 level wrong.
In 2000, when several of the planets were very close together, the astrologers predicted that there would be lots of catastrophes like volcanic eruptions or tidal waves, and this caused an entire seaside village in Gujarat to panic and abandon their homes. The predicted events, however, did not occur and the empty houses were robbed. The elections in 1971, uh, where Indira Gandhi was competing, uh, the astrologers predicted that she would lose the elections. But we know what happened, uh, Indira Gandhi won with an overwhelming majority. Again, in the 1980 elections, a famous astrologer, B.V. Raman, predicted that Gandhi's efforts to regain office may misfire and the outcome may not see a stable government. We know what happened, Indira Gandhi won the elections and formed a very stable government. Also in 1980, at the uh, Indian Astrologers Federation conference, uh, many astrologers predicted that there would be a war between India and Pakistan in 1982 and another world war between 82 and 84. All of these were wrong because like I've been saying, Astrology is complete guesswork. It feels like I'm stabbing a dead corpse now. Narendra Naik, a famous rationalist from Mangalore, uh, he has been issuing challenges to astrologers since 1991. In 2009, when the general elections were going on, he offered rupees 10 lakh to any astrologer who could answer 20 out of 25 questions about the elections and needless to say no astrologer has ever won what happened to the test that was offered to astrologers that i talked about in the beginning of this video well 27 astrologers participated and their average score the average number of correct answers was 17.25 out of 40. if you just tossed a coin uh, to decide if a horoscope belonged to a smart person or not, you would have had a better accuracy rating than these astrologers. Now you might ask me, what's wrong with believing in astrology? Pranav, why are you going around telling people that they should reject this idea altogether? When astrology seems kind of harmless and uh, and Believing in astrology kind of gives people some satisfaction. Nyeh, wrong. Astrology is very harmful. The Indian law, for example, recognizes astrology as a science and so Indian government dedicates funds to many colleges to have bachelor's and master's programs in astrology. Astrology is such a booming industry in India that billions of rupees are made every year by astrologers and astrological organizations who are ready to exploit people who are willing to give them their money. In 2020, when everyone understands that no one should be judged on the basis of their gender or the color of their skin or whatever group they belong to, uh, it's completely fine for astrology to make judgments and sweeping generalizations of people based on their sign, based on when they were born. How do you feel if someone said that you're intelligent or you're not intelligent or, or you can or cannot make money uh, based on your gender or the color of your skin? Lastly, the Indian society is rampant with pseudoscience and something that's seemingly harmless like astrology, uh, that kind of pseudoscience provides the grounds for bigger pseudoscience claims to survive. I think that the first plastic surgery is the first human body and the first human body of the body of Ganesh Ji. All this just makes India look bad, right? YouTube today is like a massive cesspool of astrologers. I have two videos on my channel about the solar eclipse and before uploading them, I just search solar eclipse on YouTube to see what kind of videos are there. And every single video was an astrology video. Oh, 
solar eclipse and how it's going to affect you and your family it won't it won't affect you or your family one of these youtube astrologers is 14 year old abhigya anand uh he became really famous because he apparently predicted the covid-19 outbreak of this year you can watch that video where he makes that prediction but he basically doesn't say anything about a virus he says there's going to be some danger to the world that could have been anything it could have been some kind of natural disaster or catastrophe or maybe a war broke out in some place maybe there was a terrorist attack uh, somewhere there are some parts of the world that where that happens all the time now he also makes many more predictions in that video most of which did not come true those are just shots in the dark and some of them might hit the mark i also want to look at this tamil astrologer who goes by the name nadi babu <laughs> i don't know if that's his real name or uh, that's what he's known as uh, on youtube but he's got many videos uh, on youtube and uh, he's super funny just watch vanakam baba sir vanakam vanakam sir indha 2020 aam aandu eppadi irukku abbingiradha agasthya jeevanaadi grandha jyotidam moolama makkalukku solluva sir ning 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 needa ning ning needa ning ning needa ning ning needa வருஷங்கள் <laughs> எப்படி <laughs> <laughs> that video is by a good friend of mine adarsh uh, i link his channel and his instagram down below uh, you should check it out because he's got some really groovy stuff if i could tell the future i would just sit at home and win lotteries all the time because making videos is really hard man but i've done this for you and all i ask in return is for you to like the video subscribe to the channel and share it with friends who might appreciate this sort of content how generous of me right anyway i'll see you in the next one till then stay scientific and remember science is dope adhe mari 2021 9th maasathukku appuram adha nam india oda poruladharame alaga thodangum adhu varaikku indha vandra varsha kaalathukku unna indha oru varsha kaalathukku yaarala edhu panna mudiyadhu romba kashtathula dhaan